the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you, and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom, so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. The Sovereign Lord has spoken to me, and I have listened. I have not rebelled or turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will not be put to shame. He who gives me justice is near. Who will dare to bring charges against me now? Where are my accusers? Let them appear. See, the Sovereign Lord is on my side. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the response to the psalm. Come to me quickly, O God. Come to me quickly, O God. O God, make speed to save me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion. Let them be turned back and disgraced who wish me evil. Let those who mock and deride me turn back because of their shame. Come to me quickly. O God. But let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say always, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Come to me quickly, O God. A 
reading from the book of Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people then you won't become weary and give up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, Who is he talking about? So that disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, It is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What do we make of Judas? Judas is a fascinating character in the Gospel narrative. He's the arch-villain, isn't he, who betrays Jesus and because of this betrayal, Jesus is led to the cross and he dies the death, an excruciating death of a criminal. Judas, remember, is the disciple who was in, entrusted with looking after the money. If you remember from the gospel story a few days ago, the rising of Lazarus, Judas was there beforehand keeping the money uh, in a bag and uh, he was known to be a thief so clearly Judas although following Jesus he um, he was no saint as such as I'm sure many of the disciples weren't when they were called by Jesus so Judas is a complex character he does the worst thing possible betraying our Lord Jesus Christ the most terrible thing perhaps imaginable. But yet without Judas, Christ would not have gone to the cross and therefore we would not have been redeemed from our sins. So it's a, a real theological difficulty to make Judas out. What do we make of him today? Now I'm no theologian, but what I do know is we can learn from Judas in the way he responds to his sin. Out of his free will, Judas betrays Jesus. He's tempted by that money, isn't he? The offer of payment from the religious leaders. He takes the money, his 30 pieces of silver, and he goes and betrays Christ. 
And we've been tempted, and we've fallen, like Judas. In that sense, we're no different to Judas. Admittedly, some of us commit worse sins and even crimes than others, but we all fall short of the glory of God. And Judas is no exception, of course. But where I think we can differ from Judas is how we respond to when we fail. In Judas's case, he betrays Jesus and he's seized with remorse, isn't he? He tries to return the money to the leaders, but they kind of mock him. He throws the money on the floor and he sadly takes his own life. Now, when we fall short of the glory of God, when we sin, we should not panic like Judas did. We should not feel that we are completely cut off and abandoned like Judas did. We know that when we fail we can go to Christ and be forgiven. When we turn to Christ in repentance, remember that word repentance, the Greek is metanoia, turning around. When we turn around in our hearts, we know that we are forgiven by Christ. So perhaps rather than learning from Judas in that way, perhaps rather than responding as Judas did to his sin, perhaps we should respond as Peter did. Because we know Peter failed as well, don't we? Peter denied Christ three times, then the cock crew. And we know that despite his sins, Peter hung around and he knew in his heart that he would be forgiven. And my goodness, didn't Christ use Peter for his glory in his founding of the church on the rock of Peter? of his place at Pentecost, his way, his writings in the New Testament, his leadership of the church in Rome. My goodness me, didn't Christ use Peter well. Yet Peter fell as well. But he came back to Christ. He didn't panic. He knew that Christ could forgive him. So I'd like you to think about this today. As we continue our journey following Christ to the cross, I'd like you to think, if you have done something you're less than proud of, something you're ashamed of, perhaps you did something years ago which you haven't been able to let go, just bring it to Jesus and ask him for his forgiveness, because nothing is too great for Christ. Amen. Now let us say the words of the Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you the Church. We pray, Lord, that the Church might proclaim Christ's forgiveness to the world, that no one is beyond his love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the Universal Church that we might proclaim your name in one voice. We pray, Lord, for the um, unity of the church between the different denominations and celebrate what unites us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the leaders of the church. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for Sarah and Rob, our bishops in this area and diocese. We pray for Father Taman as he leads us in the parish of Freezy Water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the churches as they respond to the crisis of coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that they be strengthened by your spirit, both clergy and laity, to serve those around them and give them hope in these troubled times. And we pray for your continued blessing on St George's freezing water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the world. We pray for those who are ill, those affected by this terrible virus. We pray for those who've lost loved ones, those who are anxious, those who are depressed. We pray for marriages and relationships as well during this time. And of course we pray for our key workers. We pray for the NHS and all the nurses and doctors, healthcare professionals who are helping us at this time quite selflessly. And we also pray for those lesser known heroes such as our delivery drivers, our uh, refuse collectors, all those people who have to carry on with work as normal. Lord, we also pray for those people who are suffering financially because of this situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for peace in the world. We pray for peace in the Middle East, peace in Yemen, peace in Afghanistan, Iraq, peace in um, North Korea and between North Korea and the rest of the world, peace between Iran and the rest of the world. Peace, Lord, in every human heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those. We pray for those who are homeless at this time. 
we pray, Lord, that they be looked after. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the poor, those who are hungry, those who can't take care of their children. We lift them to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those areas that are well affected by natural disaster. And we pray for the emergency services as they help such people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Enfield and we pray in particular for the people of Freezy Water that they might experience your love, peace and mercy this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we lift up to you those who are ill in mind, body or spirit. We pray for those who are watching this, that they may be restored to health. We pray for our friends and families on our hearts. We pray, Lord, in particular for Pauline Stathers, Diana Jones, Doreen Flint, Barbara Baker, Ron Painter, Luke Sheehan, Claudia Berner, Violet Pockrat, Susie Antonou, Emma Evans, Sue Lee, Father Alan Cross, Heather Anderson, Patricia Ray, Charlotte Williams, Mark, Jean Deakin, Matthew, Jeff Howson, we pray for Patricia Maloney, we pray for Alec Johnson, we pray for Neve Bennett, Flynn Bennett, we pray for Kathleen Hawkins, Dory Lynch and Mordy Fox. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those recently departed. Ken Parker, Michael Jenkins, Phil Sharman, John Mason, Charles Lankin, Beatrice Boateng, Patrick McNamee, and Reverend Linda Liversidge. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Now please spend a moment bringing your own private prayers to our Heavenly Father who loves us. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And now we give, it is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals a judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary the Blessed Virgin, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.